Also, wir reagieren jetzt auf ein Video, was mich sehr interessiert, nämlich Liberal Christians versus Conservative Christians. Es gibt, es gibt ein paar christliche Gruppen, die so sagen, ah, oh, die Bibel ist alt und wir müssen sie irgendwie updaten. Weißt du, es ist nicht mehr zeitgemäß, die Bibel. Wisst ihr, Gottes Wort ist ewig und kann man nicht ändern und wird man nicht ändern. <lacht> es, es ist... Es war vor 2000 Jahren genauso viel wert wie heute. Aber wir schauen uns das einfach mal an. Also das Video ist auf Englisch. Wenn ihr kein Englisch könnt, dann Pech. <lacht> Saying the word of God is not absolute or sovereign. You already have an agenda and you're trying to fit the Bible into that agenda. Without the mm. gospel, people are going to hell. And that's a very serious issue, more serious than sexual orientation mm -hmm. or aborted babies. Amen. It says in Romans that if you confess with the mouth and believe in the heart that Jesus is Lord, then you will surely be saved. Praying, Amen. reading your Bible. I think following the commandments is a minimum. One who tries to reflect God's love <laughs> in their lives. Welcoming what? people to love each other and be compassionate and listen is essentially what Jesus asked us to do. Jesus hat nicht nur Liebe gepreached. Jesus war kein Hippie, Digga. <laughs> <lacht> Diese ganzen Progressive Christians, die, die denken, dass Jesus war ein Hippie und er kam so rum, oh, alles, all oh, love, love is love, meine, meine Freunde. Und, aber die ignorieren den Jesus, der in den Tempel kam und alle Tische umstieß und rumgeschrien hat. Aber When we're approaching different topics like homosexuality or like pro-choice, pro-life, we have to go into them thinking about what the Bible says. They would mm -hmm. prefer to have the world or society or culture or their peers dictate their life. There are rules that are associated uh, with being progressive. The problem comes in when people try to create unnecessary boundaries. I'm Angel, I'm a worship leader, and Angel. I'm excited to be here. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm the YouTuber known as Pastor Jason Answers, and I'm happy to be here. I'm Ciara. Um, I do hair and I work with children. Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm a college student. Hello, my name is Kurt, and I am a Kurt. senior pastor. I am Someone Brenda. Knows. I am the YouTuber Someone. known as God is Grey, and I'm so excited to have a civilized conversation with you all. <laughs> Step forward if you agree with the statement. The Republican Party embodies Christian values more than the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ihre Blut kann auf jeden Fall. I don't know a whole bunch about politics, but when I see like pro-life things like that, I would have to just deduce from that that Republican is more. Christ-centered. Right, I'm not talking about big government versus small government yeah. regulation. I'm talking about specifically pro-life, mm -hmm. talking about education, public education of transgender, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm talking about marriage. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a very conservative, far-right church. I used to be a Trump supporter, although I wasn't even, I'm not even a U.S. citizen. But one thing that really hurt me and changed my perspective was how they talk about immigration and poor people like myself. I grew up in poverty and Planned Parenthood is my uh, PCP because they take um, Medicaid. But when I found out that my friends actually um, did a silent protest in front of Planned Parenthood, that really changed my perspective a lot. Like over 75% of people who get abortion are low income. I, like you, have been in, not poverty, but in situations where I couldn't afford health insurance. Universal health care is the most Christ-like thing I can imagine. It's, it's full of compassion. It's saying, yeah, maybe you have to take this out of my pocket, but it's... Um, yeah, yeah, oder? Das dauert ich zustimmen. It's for the poor who can't afford it. I'm like, that's Jesus to me. I don't see what's going on there. In regards to abortion specifically, I do think that. Aber Abtreibung? 
Abtreibung ist nicht Jesus. Abtreibung ist auf jeden Fall nicht Jesus. Ich glaube, wir können uns alle zustimmen, dass God Pro Life wäre. Ziemlich wahrscheinlich, oder? Also, ich meine, Gott würde eher Leben haben als Pro-Choice-Entscheidung. Wir Menschen treffen nicht immer die besten Entscheidungen. Fällt euch das mal auf? Wir Menschen treffen nicht immer die besten Entscheidungen. Also Pro-Life anstatt... Ja, der hier. That is someone's future in there. And I think that the choice between if that future is played out or not is God's. And I take that from Psalms where it says that his eyes saw our substance being yet unformed and he fashioned our days when yet there were none of them. Mm. And so the moment at conception when that baby exists, no matter how small they are, their whole future is lined up. And I know that sometimes circumstances on how those babies come about suck. And I've met someone that was a product of that. Okay, their biological father raped their mother, and she doesn't know who her biological father is. But I just couldn't, I couldn't imagine life without her. What about the mother that finds out? Die, diese ganzen Sachen, die sind schlimm. Okay, wenn eine Frau von einem Mann, ihr wisst, was ich meine, und sie bekommt dadurch ein Baby, das ist schlimm. Okay, nur trotzdem kann dieses Kind leben. Du musst es nicht mal selber behalten. Du kannst es auch zur Adoption freigeben. Aber ich... Auch adoptierte Kinder können glückliche Kinder sein. Aus jedem Menschen kann ein glücklicher Mensch werden. Nur weil jemand... Nur weil die Sachen, wie es passiert ist, kompliziert waren, heißt es nicht, dass man das Beste draus machen kann. Und ich finde es einfach, wenn man dafür ein, ein, ein Kind töten will, weil es ist ja, was man macht, ein Kind, was im, im Bauch ist, ist immer noch ein Kind. Und wenn man es dafür töten will, nur weil man selber irgendwie unangenehm, weil es für sich selber irgendwie unangenehm ist. Sie sagt, dass sie pregnant ist und sie geht zum Hospital und sie sagen ihr, dass es eine hohe Risikopregnung ist. Und dass, wenn sie das Kind zu Term nimmt, dass sie das Risiko von der Geburt der Risiko von der Geburt 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 von der in those circumstances, in those situations, I think that they should trust the Lord. So what if the Lord tells them to have an abortion? I'm just gonna have to say trust the Lord, and I'm not a woman, I will never be put in that place, so. And I ask that because I have a, I have a friend that his daughter um, went through that, and he chose his daughter over the baby. And so they ended up having an abortion, and he was pro-life prior to that circumstance. I mean, I would still trust God. I think if I was in that situation, I would pray with my husband and call on my church and my family. Let's come together and pray about this and whatever God, mm -hmm. like God's will will be done. If my life be taken, then I pray that this baby will be used and that mm. he would give me the comfort and the peace to get through that situation. Amen. LGBTQ plus couples should be allowed to get married in the church. No. Bro, also wirklich. Mein Respekt. Ich, jeder Mensch bekommt meinen Respekt. Aber wenn du, man, man kann nicht, man kann nicht ein Paar heiraten lassen in einer Kirche, die sagt, dass genau diese Tat eine Sünde ist. Du kannst nicht ein Paar miteinander heiraten lassen mit Gott. Wenn Gott sagt, dass es eine Sünde ist, das funktioniert nicht. Macht, was ihr wollt, aber lasst Gott daraus, weil Gott sagt ganz klar, dass es eine Sünde ist. Personally, I think they should be able to because they can have Hä? a marriage that glorifies God. Was, was macht die Conservative da? Just like any straight couples can. Well, I do believe that homosexuality is a sin. I can't tell you what you can can or can't do with your life and I do think that you should have the same rights that I have ja, in the ich, ich, ich kann nicht sagen was was ihr machen könnt was ihr tun und lassen könnt aber in der kirche heiratet aber nicht in der kirche in way that I have the right to believe differently I have to also extend that right to you well I'm married to a wonderful man and so um, so of course I would have to agree with that LGBT people should um, be allowed to get married in the church. When I was deep in evangelicalism, the narrative was being gay as a sin. And then I saw the church sort of like 
soften up or change the narrative to, okay, being gay isn't a sin, God made you gay, but God. you can never act on homosexual. God didn't, Gott macht keine Leute schwul, okay? Gott macht keine Leute schwul. Wir Menschen sind von Grund auf Sündiger. Genau wie ich von Grund auf, aus meinem Fleisch heraus, je, mit jeder Frau schlafen will, die mir über, über den Weg läuft, <lacht> ist es trotzdem eine Sünde. Es ist zwar in meiner Natur, in meiner menschlichen Natur, in meiner männlichen Natur, dass ich mit, mit tausenden Frauen schlafen will, trotzdem ist es eine Sünde. That's the sin, the act. But again, I don't see the harm. I see beautiful couples. Yeah. Like you don't see the harm, but God sees the harm. Okay. This gentleman here. So when we look at suicidal ideation, we look at trans women being murdered because of the bigotry oh. in this nation, a lot propagated by Christians, evangelicals, conservatives. The fruit of that doctrine we've been planting for not only decades, but centuries. Ich habe irgendwie das Gefühl, dass solche Christen einfach die Bibel nicht lesen. Ich glaube, da wird safe eine Frage dazu kommen. First, what LGBTQ people do with their lives is none of my business. And I believe mm. they should have the same rights as other couples do in terms of government assistance, of freedoms, of tax benefits, of course, that there should be no discrimination. But when they come to the church and they're saying, can you approve our marriage before God. I can't disregard what I believe the Bible says and say, oh, forget what the Bible says mm. so that I could be more accepting of people. I respect totally as individuals, as Americans, I think you have rights. However, I have to go based off of the Bible and the Bible equates homosexuality to sexual immorality. Mm. And so, I, I care about you guys as, as people. That, that's not gonna that's not gonna make me justify. I, I know that you mentioned like murders and suicide rates. I, I, I don't agree with any of that, and I think that's terrible. But why mm -hmm. do you think those are happening? You can no longer say I, that's horrible. What's happening over there? Because this theology is the basis of that. Aber das machen ja keine Christen. Also kein wirklicher Christ bringt Homosexuelle um im Namen Jesus Christus. Suicidal <lacht> ideation in many cases. It is the basis of transphobia in many cases. If you see all of this atrocious pain we're causing the LGBTQ plus community, then we need to look at the plank in our own eye and say, wait, why is this happening? There's a verse that mentions all of the people who won't enter the kingdom of heaven. And I can talk about what Leviticus says about homosexuality or the people who engage in that. But I just, based off as Christians, if our goal is to get to heaven, I know that if I'm a drunk, I know if I'm a fornicator, I know if I'm an adulterer, if I'm homo living a homosexual lifestyle, I will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's what the Bible says. The word hom Du kommst in die Hölle, wenn du nicht von Jesus gerettet bist. Punkt. Das alles, das gerechte Leben, das Leben mit Gott, der Wandel mit Jesus, der Wandel im Geist, ist das, was danach kommt. Du bist als erstes gerettet und dann kommt dieser Wandel. Aber dieser Wandel, so deine Früchte, sind einfach Zeichen dafür, dass du gerettet bist. Und wenn du sagst, ich bin homosexuell, und Gott akzeptiert mich so, wie ich bin und ich muss mich nicht ändern und ich, ich lebe einfach so weiter und ich habe kein schlechtes Gefühl damit, dann zeigt es mir, dass du nicht wirklich gerettet bist. Das ist die Sache. Wir sind nicht gerettet, durch, weil wir uns umdrehen von Sünden, weil wir Buße tun, sondern weil wir an Jesus glauben. Homosexuality is not even entered into biblical text until probably Ach, like Digga, the 1900s. Oh, ja. In the original okay. text, Arsenikoitai, and Malakoi are in our English rendition. Correct. It says homosexuality, but those literally translate to pedophilia. It's a relationship between an older man and his young slave. So the verses that say, a man shall not sleep with another man, for it is an abomination that... <laughs> There's no word for homosexuality in that. It's just no dude sleep with other dude. <laughs> I, I can see how you can see that relating to First Timothy passage. But if you look at Romans <laughs> chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, it's clearly in context, it's talking about quote-unquote unnatural relations. It doesn't say homosexual, but it's talking about men 
having committing acts with other men. Yeah, well, the the problem with that is that so in Romans, that's Paul writing. Right. Um, and so Paul. That's is, God writing. Yes. No, it's Paul writing. No, it's, it's God. So, 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 well, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. So, so Paul, Paul. Paul wrote letters to churches. Right. But I, I if respect you what you say, did, that's but God's you're voice. clearly saying that it's not the same thing. No, no, no. You didn't let me finish. Okay, cause you, finish. Sorry. Um, the text says natural affection. Well, my natural affection is not towards a woman. My natural affection is towards a man. There are dividing things in the Bible, and progressives want to get rid of that because they want to focus on God loves you, accepts you, and puts his arms around you. But in the process, have also watered down the gospel, also uh, deleted some things that they know what the Bible says, and because we don't want to cast people away. Mm. So I, I love that heart, but I think in the process of watering down the gospel, you set the bar so low that do they even see the real God? You have to be very careful when we talk about the literalism of the Bible, because if we do that, then basically everyone in this room is sinning because we have mixed tweeds on. Do we know the context of Leviticus? Yes, I know the context. Well, why not allow for context in Leviticus, but want, not context? Talk, we well, no, what I'm saying context. is Leviticus, the law that came, was for the people of Israel when they were rescued from the captivity of Egypt. But we see in Jeremiah 31, 31, that the Lord says that he will build a new covenant ah. under the house of Judah and under the house of Israel, right. which is still scripture. Right. So if we go based off of what we see in so, Exodus and Leviticus, that law is gone. But you're allowing for context and history, right. which you for don't thing, allow for. Right, for another thing. That's not fair. I've gone through some sort of conversion therapy. Aber wenn jetzt, guck mal, im Alten Testament sind natürlich Gebote, die wir heute als Christen durch Jesus nicht mehr halten müssen. Aber im Neuen Testament wird auch diese Homosexualität auch als Sünde bezeichnet. Das heißt, es ist immer noch eine Sünde. Therapy myself, although they called it counseling, to serve as a leader or to serve in different department. And I always questioned, why are divorced people able to serve and do things and it's not really a big of a deal in most churches whereas a lot of churches they have a statement of faith that says if you if you disagree with our um, marriage or like the traditional marriage model you cannot serve i never heard any pastor telling someone who's divorced to go back to their ex-husband or ex-wife like they say it's the same level of sin, but how come these people are like okay and these people are not? So that's mm -hmm. the problem I that's see. I'm not gonna be a literalist here, but please don't be offended because I do admire your courage in coming out. But I believe homosexuals will not be in heaven. Right. I believe homosexuals, transgenders, people who break the speed limit will all go to heaven if they put their faith in Jesus Christ as their Amen. Lord and Savior. Amen. But, but when they get to heaven, they will no longer be homosexuals. They will no longer be lawbreakers. They will no longer be drunks uh -huh, based on uh -huh, 1 Corinthians uh -huh. 6 verse okay. 9. We can uh, call, actually call, see um, what call, God's will um, is call. clearly based okay. on what it is in heaven. Okay, man. So mm -hmm. when it comes to tendencies with homosexuality, that's something that I've dealt with since I was very young. However, I don't choose to identify with those tendencies that are within me. I choose to identify with what the Bible declares that I am. And are you miserable? No, no, not at all. You're not? No, because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen, amen. Ask a evidence-based question, you can say no. <laughs> are you bisexual? No. <laughs> there is a big possibility I may never get married. Okay. There's so a big possibility you may get, never get married because of what? Because I choose to trust in the Lord and I choose to do as the scripture says and believe as the scripture says. So do you have inclinations and desires to like, to be with a guy? I have desires and inclinations to follow the voice of the Lord. Amen. And I, and I respect that. Like, I, I honestly do. But the people have it not. The people have no irgendwie They want to God folgen. Die wollen nur sich selbst, sie wollen ihrem Herz folgen. Die wollen ihrem Herz folgen, aber nicht Gott folgen. Das ergibt keinen Sinn, Digga. Sag nicht irgendwie die Bibel, dass ähm, das Herz von den Menschen 
falsch, falsch ist, ich, ich weiß gar nicht, wo es steht. Oder das, das Herz des Menschen ist korrupt oder... That's a lot of self-control to say basically you're down to have a life of celibacy. I was kind of nervous. Ja, weil die Frucht des, Heil des Heiligen Geistes, die Frucht des Geistes ist ähm, Selbstdisziplin, Self-Control. Talk about it a little bit, but I feel like it's a topic that's a lot more in the dark when it comes to the church and I don't know, I just feel like we need to move forward in a different approach than the way we've been going because it does break my heart seeing people committing suicide and, and hearing about some of the violent conclusions that some people's lives have gotten to. I feel like if anybody has any reason to find like an explanation for how I could get around scripture and marry a male, it just, I just can't. I, I can't, can't Could I also that. just ask you where you received that message for the first time? Some people in church that would say like, you know, that that was a choice. And, and I realized that I had no control over what I like or what I don't like. Literally, I don't. And I can agree with you with that. I think the choice comes in is... Sagst nicht auch äh, Paulus in, in Römer, dass egal, egal wie stark er versucht, das Richtige zu tun, er kann nicht das Richtige tun. Ich, ich versuche, den, den Vers zu finden. So, Römer 7, Vers 18. Denn ich weiß, dass mir, das heißt in meinem Fleisch, nichts Gutes wohnt. Das Wollen ist zwar bei mir vorhanden, aber das Vollbringen des Guten gelingt mir nicht. Denn ich tue nicht das Gute, das ich will, sondern das Böse, das ich nicht will, das verübe ich. Und dann äh, weiter in Vers 24 steht, Ich elender Mensch, wer wird mich erlösen von diesem Todesleib? Vers 25, ich danke Gott durch Jesus Christus, unseren Herrn. Choosing to identify with those beliefs and choosing to identify with tendencies inside of you. That's where I believe it come, becomes sin. For me, I tried to suppress that um, for years. I, you know, um, I had a girlfriend. I, I did all of these different things and it was like, oh no, it's a sin, it's that. But I had a revelatory moment when the church was mean to me. Put him over here, we don't want him with anybody, kick him out, do that. It wasn't, no one showed me the authentic love of Christ. But you know who showed me the authentic love of Christ? My friends who were gay. Weißt du, Weißt du, wer dir die authentische Liebe von Jesus zeigen kann? Jesus selber. Anstatt die Bibel zu lesen, gehst du zu seinen schwulen Freunden. I had to go to counseling because of what the church did to me. And the counselor is the one who was not a Christian. Help me to understand. People in the church hurt you, not God. And so because God did not hurt me, I could stand in a church and get married to a man. Because God did not hurt me, I can stand up every Sunday and preach to transgender, straight people, gay people. I can do all of that because of the authenticity of who and what I know God is. Jesus would protest for the Black Lives Matter movement. Never. Nah. Jesus cares so much about everything. Nein, da kann ich mir Jesus nicht vorstellen. So Protest, so auf eine Demonstration, Jesus mit so einem BLM-T-Shirt und Schild. Nee, nee, kann ich, nee, kann ich mir nicht vorstellen. Everyone that I think that he, he made, we see him making stance, stances, um, especially in the Synoptic Gospels, You know, throughout text, we see him like actually standing up for people. Right, the gospel is not about Black Lives Matter, but Jesus often stood up for those who are oppressed, for those who are discarded, those who are marginalized. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying everything about the Black Lives Matter is perfect or good, as if any movement is, but he would stand up for those who are voiceless. Yeah, I think Jesus would protest for the lives of one lost sheep. My struggle with not stepping forward was really like we all have a different voice 
and a way that we can protest in a way that would be best. Like, I had a newborn child, so I couldn't get out on the streets because of corona. Like, mm. that's why I wasn't there. So anyone that wasn't there, I wouldn't say was on the wrong side of history. It's, but it was like, what are you doing to actively advocate in your life? Are you educating yourself about white supremacy? Are you becoming actively anti-racist? I wouldn't envision like Jesus out there with like a sign because yeah. I do believe that Black Lives Matter. I do believe that all lives matter, but I don't think I need to protest in order for me to prove that. You have to remember that this same Jesus whoop the hell out of a temple because um, <laughs> because they were in there doing things that that they um, that they should not have been doing and we see him go in and be very vengeful in his approach of turning flipping over tables and doing Aber das war weil sie Gott missbraucht also weil sie Gott missbraucht haben hat er das ganze gemacht ist er wütend geworden und nicht weil ähm, weil er für jemanden einstehen wollte. Also ich, natürlich wäre äh, wär Jesus hier BLM ein, eigentlich All Lives Matter. Aber ja, ich kann mir Jesus einfach nicht so halt mit, mit so einem Schild und so einem BLM-Shirt vorstellen, Digga. Das passt ja auch nicht. Different things to protest that God's house was supposed to be a house of prayer and that they had made it into a den of thieves. I mean, I get it. Historically, if this happened in the first century and something like a Black Lives Matter was happening, I don't think Jesus would be part of that because that was not part of his mission. That's not. Mm, that's But true. today, would Jesus want me to be part of it as he's living his life through me? Then I would answer yes, to stand up for those who are oppressed. The other side misrepresents Christianity. <laughs> yeah. I feel misrepresented in that um, I often say that the evangelical or conservative church has built an idol to sexual purity and sexual integrity, which is why the gay issue is so high on the agenda and the pro-choice, pro-life issue. The Bible is not a sex manual, but so often I see it being presented as like the utmost issue. And what we we're talking about earlier about social justice and all of these other beautiful things that I believe Jesus would be a part of. You know, Jesus himself was not harping on people's sexuality constantly. I think a lot of people turn to the progressive side because they're hurt by the church and what the church did to them and how the church treated them. Showing people, come as you are and stay as you are instead of come as you are and let God change you and let God work in you. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Not Amen. live the way you were before but to change and have a new life and become a new creation and join me in heaven well i feel misrepresented because like you said you think it's about the issues like sexuality or social justice i feel like because they want to accept and because they want people to know about the love of god they're mis misrepresenting the love of god And that's what conservatives care about, the word of God and the gospel. Again, I go back to... Nicht alles ist Liebe. Nicht jede Liebe ist wirklich wahre Liebe. Weißt du, man kann sagen, wenn ich, ähm, wenn mein bester Freund zu dick wird, dann ist es Liebe, wenn ich ihm nicht sage und ihm so sage, ja, mach weiter so, du bist schön so, wie du bist und du musst nichts ändern an dir und... Um, ja, uh, go you und mach was. Das ist keine Liebe. Es ist wahre Liebe, wenn ich ihm sage, ey, du bist dick geworden, mach mal Sport. Weil ich will das Beste für ihn. Das ist zwar nicht, das hört sich zwar nicht gut an und das, das ist zwar nicht irgendwie... Und es wird ihn vielleicht verletzen. Wenn du es länger betrachtest, dann ist es gut für ihn. Und das ist wahre Liebe. Like the inerrancy of, of scripture, which I see a lot in conservative church, I do not believe the words of Paul are the words of God, and that's definitely where we veer off for a lot of people. That's a big thing. Like we believe that just all scripture, including that which Paul Aber wrote. Welche, <laughs> welche sind dann die wirklichen wahren? Glauben die nur an die vier Evangelien oder was? was inspired by God and so No, I believe it's all inspired by God, but I don't believe it's literally God. The only reason I'm going in on this is to clarify that we Aber wenn es inspiriert von Gott ist, wie kann dann Fehler drin sein, wie sie sagt? We love and honor the Bible too. 
We really do. I read my Bible every single day, and I think that is the thing that most conservatives don't understand about progressives more than anything. Welcome. Our ambiguities of like this and that, and our this is the way you see it, that's an age old thing if you go back and you look. That's why Martin Luther posted the 95 theses on the um, Catholic Church, because he had all of these issues or all of these problems with what they thought religiously, and he goes on to start the Lutheran Church. And then like um, my sister said, we read the same Bible. We, I get up and I, re I, I read and study my Bible every week. Progressive Christianity is seeing the Christianity that we grew up in and then seeing the problem and then we realize, okay, let's fix it. So we come up with new ideas and new ways to fix it, but based on the scripture that we all grew up reading. When I, when I pastor my church and they're having a hard time. They got my cameras off. Yeah, okay, you go. Hard time understanding the scriptures. I'm gentle with them because they're trying to learn. But I feel I could be harsh with progressive Christians because if, they, if you claim to be a Christian, you should know better. And I believe, especially after this talk, you don't know how to interpret the word. You are dishonoring God because you are not doing his will. Now, I firmly believe that because saying the word of God is not absolute or sovereign. You're mm. saying and you're picking and choosing based on your interpretations. I think your hermeneutics is off. See, the, my church members are trying to learn, but it seems like you already have an agenda, and you're trying to fit the Bible into mm. that agenda instead of accepting the gospel for what it is. Mm. That without the gospel, people are going to hell. And that's a very serious issue, more serious than sexual Amen. orientation or aborted babies. And I think that's the key issue between conservatives and progressives. My camera, my camera is I have his camera gewechselt. And that's a very serious issue, more serious than sexual orientation or aborted babies. Mm. And I think that's the key issue between conservatives and progressives. It's not about the issues, it's about the Word of God. And when you disrespect the Word of God like you are doing, it Like you suppose that we're doing. Because your hermeneutics is wrong. Not necessarily. Though I probably wouldn't have said it as curt, I do believe that the gospel is essential above topics of, and though the church hasn't done a great job with capitalizing on some sins and not really talking about the other, like I know that we mentioned divorce earlier, um, I do think the gospel is of primary importance, and I, I would have to second that like, my biggest thing is just like taking parts of scripture and then not taking the other, mm. um, but I probably wouldn't have said it as Kurt, but yeah. As an African-American, we dealt with slavery. And if you go back and you, you study history, um, and you look at the, the history of black people, we were indoctrinized by the Bible. Slaves, obey your masters. And they indoctrinated that into us to, to keep us oppressed. When you talk about literalism when it comes to scripture, you have to be very careful because if you because if you do that then then you open up something that is catastrophic and i think it's terrible that people took scripture out of context because all man was created in the likeness of god all men all men all people so when they were mm. quoting verses about slavery they disregarded what was said in genesis in the beginning that all people were created in the likeness of god if all men were created in the image of God, then that, that's gay people, that's transgender people, that's um, African American people, that's Asian people, that's all. You, You're talking you, about race, sexual identity, those are completely different no, things. All, mm -hmm. I don't, here's the thing, whether I choose to walk outside and identify as being black or not, I got black skin. Whether I choose to identify with behaviors on how I feel, is a completely different thing. Well, mm. that's when you go into a lifestyle and orientation and, and that's an argument within itself. There is a danger, I agree, in, in interpreting scripture literally because it can be so easily weaponized against people. Ja, du willst sagen, es ist, es gibt eine, es ist gefährlich, die Bibel für das zu sehen, für was sie ist. Interracial marriage was illegal in this country until 1967. And there were Christian women protesting because white Christians thought it was unbiblical and it was in the Bible, it was clear that we're not supposed to be mixing with other races. I can't say you're going to hell. 
I can't say that because I don't know her relationship with God. And I can't say the same for you or you. And even between us as conservative Christians, we identify in different belief systems. I think just this world is not our home. Our focus is on making it to heaven and doing what we can to get there and making sure that we're reaching people along the way. The church- Doing what we can to get there? Was ist das denn jetzt? Wo, woher kommt diese Gospel? Wie unser, unser Ziel ist es alles, was wir tun können, um in den Himmel zu kommen. Wir können nichts tun, um in den Himmel zu kommen. Jesus hat uns den Himmel... Hä? Woher kommt die jetzt, Digga? Egal. The church does need to do a better job of reaching people in a respectful, caring, loving way. Not just throwing scripture down someone's throat or not just throwing standards or what they think is right, but what Jesus showed us to live by loving our neighbor as ourselves and to make connections with people and truly care about the person and the soul because this life is just temporary. Die haben sich nicht mal umarmt, Digga. With the love of Jesus. Ja, war ein, war ein, war ein cooles Video. Schreibt mir in die Kommentare, was ihr dazu denkt. Auf welcher Seite seid ihr? <lacht> Und wir sehen uns im nächsten Video.